In this video, we'll review N95 level PPE that can be worn while caring for a patient with a highly hazardous communicable disease, or HHCD. By the end of this video, participants will be able to describe the step-by-step -step process of donning N95 level personal protective equipment, explain the rationale for donning N95 level personal protective equipment sequentially for individuals who will be working with or caring for patients with highly hazardous communicable diseases. It's important to don PPE in an area that is clean and free from the potential for exposure to the HHCD. It's equally important to don the PPE in a manner that will protect you while you provide patient care or perform activities that could expose you to the pathogen. You will need the following equipment. N95 respirator. When used correctly, the N95 respirator will protect you from exposure to airborne particles. Hood or head cover. The hood or head cover should be made from a material that is fluid impermeable and provides coverage for your neck. The hood should be long enough to drape over the gown or be tucked into the gown so it does not lift and expose the neck during clinical activity. Face Shield The face shield will protect your face and mucous membranes from splash or droplet particles. Disposable Boot Covers The disposable boot covers are made from fluid impermeable material and are worn to protect your lower legs and shoes from contamination. Gown the gown is worn to protect your body, arms, and the tops of your legs. It should be classified as an American National Standards Institute or AAMI Level 4 gown. This means the material and critical zones of the gown have been tested and meet the standards set for fluid penetration. The critical zones are the forearms and front of the gown. These areas are most likely to come into contact with the patient when providing care. Apron An apron will provide protection in situations where gross soiling may occur. Long cuff gloves N95 level PPE requires two pairs of long cuff gloves to be donned. The first layer of long cuff gloves are worn under your gown sleeves to avoid having your skin exposed. The second pair of long cuff gloves will be taped to your gown sleeve and are considered your base pair of gloves. They will not be changed during routine care. Gloves should be latex free. Standard patient care gloves. The third pair of gloves are used for patient care and should be changed between patient care tasks. Tape. The tape is used to join the second layer of gloves to the gown sleeve to prevent the glove from rolling down or accidentally being removed during patient care. We recommend vinyl tape, as it's easier to remove during doffing. Before donning, there are a few important tasks to tend to in order to maintain the physical capability of caring for a patient in N95 level PPE. Drink 6 to 8 ounces of uncaffeinated fluid, such as water, or preferably a sports type drink. Persons with long hair should tie hair back and apply an optional head cover. Remove all jewellery. Use a restroom prior to donning. Always be sure to inspect your PPE for defects before donning. Use a checklist to ensure your PPE is donned in the proper sequence. Before you don the PPE, you should first perform hand hygiene. Boot covers are the first item to be donned. We recommend sitting on a chair to don your boot covers. You will be less likely to fall or cause your boot covers to tear while donning if seated. If present, ankle ties should be tied in an easy to undo bow as this will facilitate ease of doffing. Perform hand hygiene. The N95 respirator goes on next. Before putting on an N95, you should ensure it's the NIOSH approved brand and model you have been fit tested for 
to ensure a good seal. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for donning your respirator if you are unsure of the sequence. To don an N95 respirator, grip the respirator in your non-dominant hand. Hold the respirator to your face, covering your mouth, nose, and chin. With your dominant hand, position the top strap at the crown of your head. Place the bottom strap at the nape of your neck. Move any hair beneath the bottom strap so the strap is in direct contact with your skin. Using both hands, mold the nose piece across the bridge of the nose and below the eyes. When the N95 is positioned comfortably and securely, perform a user seal check. Place your hands over the respirator covering as much surface area as possible. Exhale gently into the respirator. The seal is considered effective if you feel a slight positive pressure inside the N95. You should not experience air movement on your face along the edge of the N95 or fogging of your glasses if worn. If you do, your seal is not effective. At this point, you should remold the N95 to your face and perform the seal check again. If your respirator fails a second seal check, secure a new respirator and begin the process again. You will don your hood next. When donning the hood, position it so it rests above the brow line and does not obstruct your vision. If the hood has ties, be sure to secure them with a bow. Perform hand hygiene. Then put on your first layer of gloves, the inner long cuff gloves. When choosing the size of your gown, make sure to select a size that is long enough to reach your mid-calves and overlap the tops of your boot covers. To ensure your gown is long enough, you may have to choose a larger size, resulting in it being too wide. Your donning partner can adjust the fit by overlapping the gown at the back and taping to secure it in place. When donning the gown, ask your partner to secure the ties with easy-to-untie bows to avoid having to struggle with a knot during the doffing process. The gown should be tied loosely around the body to avoid breaking during movement. Pull the sleeves of your gown down to the level of your knuckles and carefully pull on the long cuff gloves while maintaining control of the gown cuff. To prevent gloves from being accidentally removed or rolling down, your partner will need to tape your gloves to the gown sleeve. To facilitate tape removal during doffing, fold the end of the tape over on itself to create a tab so that the end of the tape is easily found. The tape should overlap end to end on itself, covering the entire area where the glove cuff meets the gown. As the partner applies the tape, the person donning should make a fist to flex their forearm muscles. This action prevents the tape being applied too tightly. Once applied, you should press down on the tape to ensure the tape adheres to the gown and the glove. The face shield is next in the sequence. The face shield can potentially distort your vision, so it's important to be aware of that to allow you to prepare and adapt. The foam headband should rest above the brow on the lower half of the hood. This will help keep the hood in place to provide protection to your forehead. If your face shield fogs up, it's usually because you didn't achieve a good seal with your N95 or that your N95 has lost the seal. The next item to don are your standard patient care gloves. These gloves should be changed when visibly soiled, when torn, and between patient care tasks per standard precautions.
If gross soiling is anticipated, the apron should be donned before the face shield is donned. If the apron becomes soiled, it can be removed easily. Remember, the cleaner your PPE, the safer it is to doff. At this point, it's important that your donning partner performs a safety and range of motion check to ensure your PPE is done properly and there are no breaches in your PPE. Your partner will examine your hood, gown, N95 and boot covers to be sure all seams and ties are intact. Your partner will also check to be sure that no skin or clothing is exposed. The goal is to cover 100% of skin and clothing to mitigate the risk of exposure. Consider selecting a different size gown or boot covers if gaps in coverage are noted. Coverage gaps may be secured with tape if necessary, however, be mindful that the addition of tape may create a need to adjust the doffing order to accommodate for removal. Now you are ready to care for the patient. Keep in mind, if you begin to feel ill or uncomfortable, do not go in to care for the patient. Instead, get out of the PPE safely.